Good day legends, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about my moto camping kit, specifically what I've got packed to uh, go away this weekend and adventuring on my new to me uh, half a twin. So, let's get into it. Starting off with the boring stuff, uh, these are rig gear RGO 2 bags uh, that are mounted to some uh, essentially HDP plastic or breadboards essentially that are cut to a nice shape on the side of the bike and mounted to the normal grab rail mounts. Uh, works great. The reason I'm running the rig gear bags, which uh, those who follow the channel for a while know that I normally have a canvas set that live on the DR, is that these just magically fit on the back of this thing absolutely perfect. So might upgrade them later, but saddlebags are stupidly expensive. So if I've got a working set for each bike, I'm pretty happy. Anyway. Let's talk about what's in them. Now you'll notice I've got nothing on the back, no big tail bag or anything like that. When I go moto camping, I like to keep it as clean and simple as I can and as lightweight as possible. And that's just because most of the places I go camping involve some nice off-roading and decent riding to get there. Uh, and I would rather be a little bit uncomfortable at night uh, or maybe, you know, have a cold dinner, but have a great day's riding than have a terrible day's riding because I put 30 kilos on the back of my bike. It's just how I am. Everyone's unique. Some people love to take absolutely everything. Uh, some people, like me, like to go light. So, with that in mind, uh, this bag isn't expanded. So it's 12 litres at the moment. There's one on each side, obviously. But let's just quickly have a look at what goes inside it. First thing I can reach is my headlamp. This doubles as my spotlight. Super bright things like 1500 lumens, picked it up years ago, uh, but it goes on my helmet if I'm riding at night and need to be able to really see around uh, where my headlights don't work. I have no idea how these CB500 headlights actually are, so we'll see. Uh, got a nice quick dry towel. Yeah. This is, I guess you'd call it my sleeping bag. It's just a cotton sleeping bag liner. Um, I live in Queensland, so it's a pretty tropical cli climate to begin with. And uh, honestly, this and wearing my riding gear to bed is more than enough for me. I, uh, I don't find myself needing a big thermal bag until we get really into winter. And when we get to that, I'll probably actually have to put that up on the back because getting a decent thermal bag that's also small is kind of difficult to do. Got a handy dandy blow up pillow. and 10 pegs and lastly in this bag the only other thing in there is my tent so when it comes to picking a camping tent and probably in the next video i'll run you guys through what this actually looks like set up uh, but what you want to do is you want to find one that's not too long so it'll fit in your saddlebags um, and i mean there is a thousand different designs i've had a lot of them uh, this tent i paid 20 dollars for Bought it used on Marketplace and it's actually been one of the best tents I've got. Throughout summer I actually generally like to ride, I uh, like to sleep in a hammock like I did on the last crewbit trip. Uh, I really rate the hammock setup. It just so happens that where we're going this weekend, uh, we're camping across the road from a pub in a big field. There's no trees in that field and I really don't feel like working out how to rig a hammock between two bikes and not wake up on the ground in the morning. Let's have a look in the other back. So, I got an extra water bottle, socks and jocks, second pillow because I'm soft and I like a pillow between my legs if I sleep on my side, air mattress, looks like I doubled up on tent pegs so that's interesting, and just an emergency hooded poncho in case I need it. That's it. That's all that goes in the kit. Uh, and that's all I'm gonna take away this weekend. Other than of course, sorry actually, uh, a couple of liters of water in my backpack uh, and the tank bag will just be full of drones and cameras and fun stuff like that. So I can show you guys where I'm going. Quick word on what's obviously missing from this kit. Uh, I don't have any food packed in it. Uh, the reason for that being we're camping next to a pub, we're going to a different pub for lunch or even the same pub for lunch. So I don't really have the need other than a few muesli bars in the center bag. Uh, if I were, I'm not the kind of person that brings gas cookers or anything. I'll probably actually just leech off the someone else who comes on the ride, if I'm honest and I really needed heat. Uh, but otherwise it'd be a 
a tin of beans and a packet of wraps in a tank bag and that'd be me. Uh, the other thing I haven't packed for this trip is my uh, big chair, oh sorry, my camp chair. I've got quite a few of them actually to choose from, but I really just don't want the bulk on the back of the bike, considering I'm very unlikely to sit down and, you know, I can always sit on the ground if I need to. Uh, but we're not going to be having a campfire, we're not going to be sitting around it, and I think there's even park chairs where we're going, so, you know. Uh, saving a bit of space there for something that will waste 10 minutes setting up, to sit on for 10 minutes, to then have to pack up again. Uh, look, my last piece of advice is that you will never... <laughs> unless you spend a lot of money and you're really good at it, you'll never be able to find the perfect camp setup for absolutely everywhere you go. Best you can do is have a fairly modular setup that you can change according to, especially the season, uh, but where you're going and the type of trip you're going. If I were gonna go do three weeks in the Simpson, uh, I'd probably have a bit more gear to pack on uh, and I'm probably carrying a lot more water, to be honest. But for an overnighter near a pub, this is perfect. All up, I think it weighs a grand total of five kilos. It's no wider than the handlebars. It is going to be neat. Anyway, uh, that'll do me for a video for this week. Next week, tune in and we'll see how this CB500 went uh, taking it off-roading and motor camping on it. I am really excited to try it out, especially in comparison to the old Dinosaur DR over there, and uh, give my thoughts on that one. So, catch you legends in the next one. Make sure you subscribe and like and thumbs up. And uh, see you later.